All electrical work must be done by a qualified electrician. Only a qualified electrician using the personal protective equipment and following the procedures recommended in NFPA 70E should ever attempt service or repair of or near an energized area or component of the machine. Whenever maintenance is performed while the equipment is electrically energized, there is a potential electric arc flash hazard. Refer to NFPA 70E for the personal protective equipment required when working with electrically energized components. Pneumatic and hydraulic components may move unexpectedly if not de-energized. Physically restrain any components capable of movement when working on or near those components. Note, the terms traveling end and carriage end are used interchangeably in the Cyber and Cyber AT saw documentation. In this video, our problem is that the in-feed conveyor will not start in the automatic mode only. This is normally a simple problem to troubleshoot and fix. Typically, the cause of this problem is the PLC does not sense all of the saw blade motors to be running that should be running for the cut being made. This can be caused by either sawdust in the starter, causing the loss of continuity across the auxiliary contact that sends the run signal back to the input module, or the auxiliary contact on the starter is bad, causing it not to close when the starter is energized, or the input module is bad that the signal is sent back to from the starter. Let's take a look at an example. If you are using five blades to make a cut, you will have five individual inputs from the auxiliary contacts on the five starters back to the input modules. When this happens, the PLC will sense that all five saw blade motors are running and it will automatically start the in-feed conveyor. If you only get four inputs back, as in this example, it will not start the in-feed conveyor. Just because you see all five motors are actually running, it does not mean that the inputs back to the PLC are working correctly. First thing you need to do is find the location of the input modules that the signals are being sent to. You can find the location of the run input for saw blades 1, 2, and 6 if you have six blades on your saw on page 7 of drawing B90507. For blades 1 and 2, it shows that the input module is located in rack 0, slot 4 of the PLC system. Rack 0 is the top PLC rack in the stationary end control panel, and the module is in slot 4 in that rack. If you have the older 9030 GE series PLC system, slot 4 is the first input module to the right of the empty slot in that rack. If you have the new RX31 GE PLC system, the power supply is in slot 1. If you are confused about the slot number, open the wiring cover door and look for wire numbers such as I001, I002 as it shows on the drawing. This way you are assured you have the correct input module. The LED input indicator for blade number 2 run auxiliary contact is A1, and for blade number 1 run auxiliary contact it is B3. When those two motors are running, then those two LED indicators should be lit. Saw blades numbers 3, 4, and 5 can be found on page 13 of the same drawing. For blades 3 and 4, it shows the input module to be located in rack 2, slot 1. Rack 2 is the top PLC rack in the traveling end control panel and the input module is located in slot 1 of that rack. The LED input indicator for blade number 3 run auxiliary contact is A1, and for blade number 4 run auxiliary contact it is B3. For blade number 5 run auxiliary contact, it is in the same rack but in slot 2, and its LED input indicator is A5. If saw blades 3, 4, and 5 are running, then those three LED indicators should be lit. Now that you have the location of the correct input modules, all you need to do is look and see which LED indicator is not lit. The example we are showing is that rack 0, slot 4, the A1 LED indicator is not lit, which is for blade number 2. Now set your voltmeter to the AC setting. With the wiring cover door open, on the input module in slot 4, place one meter lead on wire number I001. This is the input wire from the auxiliary contact on the starter to this input module. Place the other meter lead on any white wire labeled X2. If you read 120 volts, replace the input module. If you do not read 120 volts, you need to find the location of the starter. To find the location of the starter, turn to page 1 of the same drawing. The drawing indicates that it is in the same stationary end control panel on shelf S1. You will find the starter on the far left of that shelf. Now place one meter lead on wire number I001 on the starter and the other meter lead on any white wire labeled X2. 
At this point, you should read 120 volts. If you do not, you either have sawdust in the starter or a bad auxiliary contact on the starter. In either case, you will need to replace the starter. Do not use shop air to try to blow out the starter. Replace the starter. You can try to get the sawdust out of the starter once you have it out of the machine and keep it as a spare starter. If all the above fails, call the MyTech Customer Service Department at 1-800-523-3380. Listen for the correct option number as they may have changed.